Welcome to Vintage Hollywood Archive. Gorgeous, talented, and one of her kind, Janet Lee was an incredible American actress. She was easygoing and a peculiar soul. She is most remembered for her Oscar-winning role in Hitchcock, where she played her role in a phenomenal way. How could Tony Lee Curtis cheat on Janet Lee? Make sure to watch the video until the end. And if you are new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archive channel. Janet Lee, the mysterious, divinely gorgeous, and utterly seductive Hollywood actress who stole the audience's hearts and perhaps gave them cardiac arrest too with her jaw-dropping performance in Alfred Hitchcock's almighty and perhaps one of the greatest thrillers of all time, Psycho. Janet's performance was unlike anything anyone in the United States had ever seen. It was the epitome of a scared maiden in distress, and she nailed every bit of the 45-second performance. The scene is still remembered as Hollywood's greatest scenes of gore. But before the actress found herself being murdered in the major hit film Psycho, she played the typical ingenue, a flower girl who was a virgin and could not for the life of her pursue a man, until one strong, biceped man scooped her in his arms and woos her. From musicals to comedies, the industry took advantage of Janet's bright smile and good nature. She became a strong leading lady after Psycho and was seen as a strong, independent woman in most of her films. Some of her major hit films include Jet Pilot, The Naked Spur, and The Manchurian Candidate. She was bold and outspoken and was not at all afraid to get whatever she wanted. She was extremely talented and hence being blessed with both beauty and brains, the woman's ability to impress knew no bounds. Her strawberry blonde hair was her signature look. Her eyes were alluring, nose raised, brow sharp, cheekbones high, and a dash of red could always be seen on Janet's lips. Her presence demanded attention. That was no lie. Whatever room she entered had people turning their heads and glancing at her, some even gawking. Not only this, but her voice was siren-like. Janet was a natural beauty and was literally born to shine. So, how did this impeccable beauty find her way inside the biggest film industry on the planet? Janet was scouted by an old and legendary actress, Norma Shearer, at the mere age of 18. She was at a ski resort where her father was working at the desk as a receptionist. A loving father, he had put up a picture of Janet on the desk inside a frame. When Norma decided to check into the ski resort, her eyes fell on the picture and she fell in love with the way Janet looked. She knew she had to see this girl on the silver screen. So, upon further inquiry of her father, who was her fan, she secured a contract for Janet with Metro Golden Wind Mare. Janet appeared on radios initially, and from there she made her debut in the film called The Romance of Rosie Ridge, playing a timid maiden. With her phenomenal acting skills, she impressed moviegoers from the years 1947 to 2004, when death ended her rule as Hollywood's greatest diva and a reputable author. Janet Lee was originally born as Janet Helen Morris, a beautiful name given to her by her parents, on the 6th of July in the year 1927 in Merced, California. She was the only child that her parents ever conceived, which explained their attachment to their daughter. Her father, Frederick Robert Morrison, was a descendant of German and Scottish parents, and her mother, Helen Lytta, was a Danish immigrant. Janet, despite being an only child, was not brought up in an affluent family. Her parents were dirt poor, working multiple jobs and shifts in order to make enough to provide shelter, food, and clothing to little Janet. But she never let that get to her. Something inside her told her she was about to go from rags to riches soon. Living in a shabby apartment in Stockton, it was safe to say Janet had very humble beginnings. The trio moved multiple times in a single year, with her parents looking for jobs. Little Janet, however, was fascinated by movies. She thought she could be anyone in a movie. Growing up in poverty, Janet did not exactly have all that she wanted for Christmas, or any other occasion for that matter. So by watching movies, she could fantasize all that she wanted and that kept her happy. 
After spending a couple years in Stockton, the trio moved to Merced, Janet's birthplace, in the year 1941. The reason behind this abrupt move was the fact that her maternal grandfather was in a grave condition and needed to be looked after. Janet's family had a Presbyterian faith, so little Janet was part of the school's choir for many, many years. Janet completed her elementary education at the Weber Grammar School in Stockton. After that, she joined Stockton High School and graduated at the age of 16. Janet enrolled in the University of Pacific in 1943 to major in music and psychology. She was a part of the university's choir, an Alpha Theta Tau sorority, which had been reserved for the prettiest of girls. Janet had a lot of friends in those days and was very popular amongst the boys. Two years into her college, Janet visited her parents in Sierra Nevada during the Sugar Bowl when she had her winter break. That was when she was scouted by Norma Shearer and started a contract with MGM Studio while simultaneously receiving acting lessons from a very famous drama coach, Lillian Burns. To complete her education, while doing all of the above, she enrolled in the University of Southern California. Her name was thence changed to Janice Lee. Metro Goldwyn Mayer was very quick to give a contract to Janet as they had already been looking for someone that would resemble a young, naive country girl and would be able to play submissive roles. Young Janet proved to be the perfect candidate. While playing the helpless maiden, Janet was given the opportunity to work with some of the biggest names of Hollywood, including Errol Finn, Gary Cooper, Kirk Douglas, John Wayne, and James Stewart. One of Janet's first ever films was the 1949 adaptation of Louisa May Alcott's Little Woman, a classic novel and a film that was very anticipated by the audience. And it proved to be worthwhile when Janet appeared on the screen as Meg March, shy and hesitant. This was one of the roles that Janet Lee quite literally embodied. She made it her job to be Meg and not Janet. Some of the greatest films that Janet had starred in are Touch of Evil, Scaramucci, Holiday Affair, Bye Bye Birdie, Just This Once, Houdini, Pepe and Two Tickets to Broadway. Janet's relationship with men had always been turbulent and chaotic. And one such was her marriage to Tony Lee Curtis. She met Tony in the year 1950 at a Hollywood party at One Stars. They were very attracted to one another and fell in love quickly, marrying in 1951. They became one of Hollywood's most admired couples, magazines and newspapers publishing photos of them at parties, restaurants, the red carpets, and dates. Their first ever film together was Houdini, and the audience was more than ecstatic to see the couple's wonderful chemistry on screen. Houdini was a film based on the great escapist, Houdini, and was a story revolving around his fictional love life. Tony was a typical Hollywood skirt chaser and had admittedly started working in Hollywood for the girls. He had been offered a whopping $30,000 to marry his female co-star, Piper Laurie. The two hated each other and Tony could barely stand the sight of her, let alone consider her attractive. The two were great together on stage, but the situation was far from what it looked like in real life. On the other hand, on the set of a blockbuster movie called Jet Pilot, Janet had been receiving unwanted attention from the film's director, Howard Hughes. That was when she had met Tony, who served as an indication to Howard that she was not interested in the eccentric tycoon who could possibly ruin both their careers. Despite constant warnings from their friends that it would destroy their careers, Janet and Tony eloped together in the year 1951. However, their friends were proven wrong, fortunately, because the years that Tony and Janet were married were the years when their careers had thrived more than they ever had. Janet starred in some of the most important films of her life, like Jet Pilot, The Manchurian Candidate, Psycho, and Touch of Evil. Tony's career also took flight, and he appeared in The Sweet Smell of Success, The Defiant One, Some Like It Hot, and Spartacus. One day, five years later, Tony found something peculiar among Janet's things while looking for a lost item. He suspected it to be a love letter from one of her old co-stars, Bob Foss. While accusing her of this, he hid the fact that he had been seeing women behind her back for quite some time. His hedonistic and playboy ways were unbeknownst to his wife, unfortunately. Tony justified his skirt-chasing behavior, 
and said that since he, as a man, was in his prime, he could not help himself when women with fantastic bodies eagerly threw themselves at him. He even admitted to having affairs with Hollywood divas Marilyn Monroe and Gloria DeHaven. Tony was a man that had clear commitment issues, which Janet did not notice at first. She was oblivious to the fact that her supposedly loving husband was not someone who she thought she was. The couple divorced in the year 1962. After this, she married the stockbroker Robert Brandt, and they remained together till the end of her days. Janet's career started declining in the middle of the next decade, 1960s. She appeared in several television movies with her daughter, Jamie Lee Curtis, in the 1970s. Her debut in television movies was in 1969 when she shot The Monk in Mirror, Mirror. She had then began retreating from the television screen, not interested in doing any films, and she shot her last film at the age of 73 in the year 2000. Other than turbulent relationships and a bold personality, there was so much more to Janet. For more than six long decades, Janet entertained audiences of all ages, skin colors, and genders with more than 60 movies. She played a significant role in solidifying women's place in the film industry and Hollywood by playing various roles of young ingenues with some of the most significant leading men of the era, like Flynn and Stewart. She was a bold individual, and that was what was the best thing about her. However, the role that will awestruck future generations was her role as the woman on the run in Psycho. Her gruesome scream and the blood running down the drain will never be forgotten. She was considered very wild for appearing in just underwear in the first scene of the film. It may seem normal by the standards of today, but it was shocking back in the 1950s. Janet never took showers after that scene when she was alone in the house, choosing to bathe instead. She said that the movie gave her very wrinkled skin since she spent a whole week in the shower because of it. This was the movie that earned Janet Leigh a Golden Globe Award and an Oscar nomination. She performed in a series of films, produced a few albums, and wrote books. Her acting career was quite literally a turning point in Hollywood history and left viewers shocked to the core. It opened a new era for producers and directors to focus on something other than romance. Janet was also awarded an honorary Doctor of Fine Arts degree by the University of the Pacific, her old school in Stockton, California in 2004. She was also part of the board of directors of the Motion Picture and Television Foundation, an institute that provided medical services to actors. She was honored by the University of Pacific, with a theater on campus being named after her, Janet Lee Theater. She passed away on 3rd of October in her Beverly Hills home in the year 2004. She was 77 years old and had been fighting vasculitis since a whole year, an inflammation of the blood vessels and a condition that made her very irritable and prone to moon swings and tantrums. Her daughters, Kelly and Jamie, were beside her on her deathbed, and so was her husband, Dr. Brandt. Janet's life was a true example of rags to riches and of what it meant to battle poverty and come out on top to escape the rat race as a woman in the middle of the 20th century and contribute so much to the Hollywood film industry. She was magnificent, a good mother and a dutiful wife, and an amazing actress too. She was bound to be the leading lady, to strive and to prove her worth and to exceed everyone's expectations. She will forever be remembered for her blonde locks and that bone-chilling shower scene, no matter how gruesome, that fans will continue to love. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let's not forget that men are not the only ones who can commit moral transgressions. Betrayal has happened even between best friends in Hollywood. Why did Elizabeth Taylor betray Debbie Reynolds? Watch this video.